What's up guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Jake. Welcome to the JD Cars Automotive YouTube channel. Please be sure to go check us out at jd-cars.com. Follow us on Instagram at jd.cars and please be sure to subscribe for more content. As you guys can see here on our JKU, we have quite a few lighting accessories, everything from this front bumper, light bar right here, these two LEDs that aren't even on, color changing headlights, color changing rock lights, a windshield light bar, and even more to come down the line. But with all this lighting comes a need for a lot of lighting management. And it's pretty difficult on a Jeep. There's not a lot of room inside for auxiliary switches in the dash and whatnot. And when we take these beasts off road, we have the challenge of keeping all of these connections watertight. Otherwise we could short out these accessories and uh, be left in the dark. Now we do currently have a VAW switch, eight switch overhead switch panel installed in the JKU right here. Over on the left, we have this touch capacitive button that turns all the switches on and off. And we just have this pretty standard style toggle switch here. Now I'm completely fine with that overhead switch panel design right there. Um, I think it works great. Though when we pop the hood, there are some areas that could use improvement on the actual switch box itself. Now to slightly rewind, this switch box has two big main leads that go to the battery. So it's electrified directly with 12 volts right from the battery over there. And then opening this unit up with this little screw that we have to hold on to. <laughs> uh, not really the end of the world, but a little awkward. Opening this up reveals eight independent fuses and relays to manage our accessories. As you can see here, I've only got four areas filled up right now. One switch is for our daytime running lights, which are on right now. Um, the second switch is to turn this into trail mode, which is blinding. The third one is our rock lights right under here. And the fourth right now is our bumper light bar. So I have room to add four more accessories in here. And the incredible thing about this is usually with all of these accessories, you're usually sent like a wiring harness that you have to run to your battery through here, through the firewall and into your interior. And then you have to find somewhere to store the switch. And, and that can be pretty difficult and time consuming. So the beauty of this box, and I cannot stress how much I love this boss switch setup. I tell all my Jeep friends and all my truck friends about it because this thing is genius. All you have to do when you get a new accessory like this bumper light bar, like a windshield light bar, anything powered via 12 volts. You can chop off the harness and just take the two leads from that, plug it right into here directly. No fuses, no nothing. All you have to do is crimp on a little connector to the end, or even if you're in a rush, you can just wrap the bare wire around this and tighten down the screw. So that makes installing accessories light years faster than the previous way of actually using the included harness. And it makes the management and operation of them from inside the Jeep a lot cleaner and easier. Now, the only thing I don't really like about the switch box is that it's a little bit vulnerable to water, a little bit. And when I say a little, I really mean just a little. We do have a fully closing lid here. This could have a rubber seal on it to improve things. And we do have rubber boots for every hole in the box. So it's got just a tiny little slit in it to allow a wire to pass through. Now, those aren't huge deals at all, but they are slight weak points. So I do sometimes worry a little bit from doing mudding or getting deep in some water. I worry, I don't know. And then of course, very small thing, not a big deal because we're not opening this box every day or even every week. Oh, almost lost it. <laughs> This is my other little pet peeve about the first generation. Ah, there we go. It can just be a little bit difficult to get those threads to line up sometimes, but other than that, this is a nice stainless screw. It's lasted the entire life of the system. So those are really my three only little jabs at the first generation, which has lasted me a very long time and has held up extremely well. But Voswitch was kind enough to send out their new JK100 unit, which is the second generation of their switch management. We've got it in the garage. My hands are about to freeze off, so let's get in there and get to work. Alrighty, folks, before we get too into things, 
I'm gonna plug in a battery charger. It seems that my little intro, running all of these accessories at once without the car running, kind of ran down my battery. All right, so y'all have gotten the breakdown on my JKU existing setup, but let's jump into the JKU 100 box here from Voswitch and see what the next generation looks like. Let's grab a knife, cut open the box, and see what we got here. Oh yeah, real thick piece of styrofoam on top here, protecting everything. Ooh, this is new. That's a sweet decal. Let's start off by breaking down this little bag we received on top. So the first thing that catches my eyes, we're provided with a nice little add -a fuse. So we can plug this right into an existing fuse on our fuse box on the Jeep. Plug this other end into the source box, the Voss switch box. And that way the Voss switch will know when the car is on and off and we won't kill our battery. <laughs> Though if you do want to be able to run auxiliary lights without having the Jeep turned on or without the key in the ignition at all, you probably won't want to install this. So like we've got some mounting hardware, got some spade crimps and a spare blade fuse, whole bunch of extra zip ties, to neaten up all of our wiring. Not sure what this is. Oh wow, look at the selection of stickers we get with this. Tons of stickers. Looks like we have some mounting instructions and probably more importantly, nice color wiring diagram and color instructions. I wanna give props to Voswitch because a lot of Amazon products come with very poorly worded and poorly translated instructions. Voswitch has very clear instructions. Everything makes sense and it's all in nice color pictures as well. You can see we even have programming instructions and everything. Low voltage cutoff. By the way, the low voltage cutoff does work. That's what happened to my Jeep out in the driveway. All my auxiliary lights turned off about 10 seconds after filming the intro. So that definitely works and it's a huge lifesaver. Not all switch panels come with these features. And like I was talking about, this little add -a fuse over here this is what they call the trigger wire, and as you can see, it's only if needed if you want to enable ignition power control. We'll get into this a little bit more later. Now to get to the exciting stuff here. Oh yeah. Looks like we have a lot more mounting options here. First thing that caught my eye was ball mount option here, which surprisingly, nope, never mind, it's not metal, but is it? No, never mind, it's not metal, it's composite, but Super heavy duty ball mount here. We have two ball joint ends here. So you can rotate this 360 degrees and rotate it 180 degrees in either direction and a uh, ton of mounting versatility. I don't personally think I'm gonna go this route. I'll probably do the overhead mounting option, but very cool that we received this. So this is probably the option I'll go with. This little bar right here actually goes over the little crow's foot up on the top of the windshield inside of our JKU. That's gonna clip on and it should hold it facing downwards about that much. But here is the actual switch unit itself. Looks really cool. Immediately it feels super high quality. Nice button feel. Yep, buttons work. <laughs> and coming to the back, I wanted to just like see what the back of this board looks like. We can't even see the back of the board. It's completely plated off and waterproofed. So that's a big upgrade from the original unit because the back of the original unit was completely exposed. It may have been waterproofed, but this seems much more robust. It's super heavy, looks really cool. Checking out this connector on the back of the switch panel. You can see we do have a watertight seal and a little strip of 3M just to help with mounting this. So we'll set this aside for now. I am curious to see the power management system because to be honest, this is the area I wanted to see the most improvement. So I'm excited to see what they've done here. Oh man, that's crazy. That's nuts. This is a completely different unit. Completely different. Wow. I don't even know where to start. So right off the bat, we have a much simplified signal cable that runs from this box, the source box, to our control box here. Previously, it was like an eight or maybe even nine, 10 wire cable. It was really thick and kind of difficult to pull through the firewall and then route up to your switch panel. This is a very thin wire. It's very thin, it's only a four pin. That will make routing this a lot easier. I know that sounds crazy, but it's the little things. And like they say on the Voss Switch box, painless installation, plug and play. 
That's, that's their motto. So I'm really glad to see that they're keeping with their motto. They're trying to think of those little things that do make a difference and I appreciate that upgrade there. Moving from left to right here, we have this super hefty eight gauge power wire. And as you can see here, it actually has a really nice hefty inline fuse pre-installed. That's what the extra blue blade fuse is for. I've never blown my fuse on my existing unit. Um, never broken a switch or even blown a fuse in my fuse box, but nice that they include extras. You'll also notice that we do have crimped and soldered connectors, super solid connections. I've never had any of these crimps break. And all of our wiring here is encased in this really nice heavy duty sheathing, which will resist chafing and tearing. And then what I was kind of shocked to see here, if we follow this lead down, we actually have threaded waterproof connections. That's a huge, huge upgrade over the previous unit. I don't really feel it's necessary to unscrew it. I, I immediately want to, but these two we can unscrew. There's nothing run through them yet. It looks like we basically have these little plugs, these little silicone or rubberized plugs right here. We have a total of eight here for our eight accessories, presuming we're gonna pull this little rubberized piece out and stick our wire through when we're ready to install. But I've, this is a very interesting little waterproof connection here. I've never seen something quite like it. Very cool innovation from Vosswitch. Moving around the ports here, we have the other end for the switch box connector for this wire here that's gonna run, run to the switch panel. We do get a terminal ring connector on the ground here and the positive lead is just pre-tinned because they do provide the Atta fuse which will crimp on to here and then plug into the fuse box if we so desire. And now, the moment of truth, have they added a watertight seal to the main source box? Let's find out right now. So immediately a lot easier to remove the cover here. We don't have to mess around with any screws that we can lose. It's just a self-contained latch here, very easy. And hell yeah, nice job Voswitch. They added a nice thick rubberized seal all the way around this cover. Also nice that they added a fuse map to the inside of our panel here. Let's get a little instant replay of how easy it is to... All right, that's easy enough for me. Overall, I am super impressed by this new second generation from Voswitch, the JK100 unit here. Let's get into the install. Alrighty, so first things first, before I pull out my old Vosswitch system here, I've just gone and labeled my leads. So bumper light bar, rock lights, DRLs, and trail lights. Good idea to do that if you're gonna be disconnecting existing auxiliary accessories. So we're just gonna pull this Vosswitch open, come in and unscrew these suckers with a Phillips head. Don't even have to fully remove them. Just loosen up a little bit. Those guys loosened. Pull them out, like so. There we go. All of the JK Vosswitch systems are held in with these two little 10 millimeter fasteners right here. I'm sure it's very similar on the JL as well. So we're just gonna pull out these two. And that's really all that holds this box in place here. Now, as much as it pains me, I'm not gonna be able to just plug my new Voswitch system into these power leads here because we do have that new waterproof style connection which is awesome. Does just mean we're gonna have to snip our zip ties here and remove all this current wiring to replace it with the new wiring. Not a big deal. I'm just gonna take some snips and snip all my zip ties here. And I think what I'm gonna do to simplify things is I'm gonna tie a string to my main control wire that goes through the firewall to the switch. I'm gonna tie a string to my existing one and just pull it through. If you don't have an existing wire running through, the easiest way to get through this access hole right here, just right of the brake booster, so you can get a good shot of that. There is the access point right there. Honestly, the easiest and cheapest way to get your wire through your firewall is to straighten out a coat hanger and send that thing right down into your footwell. Should pop out somewhere around here, at which point we're gonna pop off a couple pieces of side trim right here. And we're also gonna have to remove the A pillar trim. But before we get there, let's just worry about getting power hooked up to our new box. So grabbing our 10 millimeter socket, again, we'll come over to the battery. Break loose this 10 millimeter. Now, incoming second generation boss switch, JK100 here. Undo our power leads. Correct myself there, power lead. 
singular because <laughs> we only have one main 8 gauge power lead and we have this tiny little ground that will hook up just so that the unit does in fact have a ground and I don't think I'm going to hook up the optional ignition power source yet. I never really used it with the first box because I like to turn on the light bars with the vehicle off and the key out of it sometimes. Very similar to the first unit. I'm going to bring it in just like so to mount up right here. I'm going to make sure I don't have any wires getting pinched there. But we're just going to reinstall these two factory 10 millimeter bolts right here. And the boss switch will be mounted up. Looks like I got to reverse my cover and we'll be good to go. Oh yeah, that is nice and secure. Not going anywhere. I think they definitely beefed up the gauge of this, uh, this metal plate right here. All right, so we'll run our ground and our nice big power wire over to the battery, hook those up, reinstall our two 10 millimeters, and then we'll zip tie everything along this wire loom that goes down along the bottom of the windshield here. You might have to pull off your engine cover to do so, but it's just a friction fit cover and that will give you better access to running your wires neatly and cleanly over to the battery. All right, so I've got our leads hooked up. Engine bay is looking nice and neat now, and we're gonna transition over to inside the vehicle. As you can see, I've just pulled off my old switch panel right here. You can see the whole backside is very much exposed to the elements, so that's kind of its biggest weakness um, in terms of having the top off, running outdoors. Kind of sketchy, but we're gonna replace it now. Gen 2. So first step there is taking a well, windshield visor off of here and getting it out of the way. To do so, we're gonna use a T20 Torx bit. Ah! Amazingly, did not lose any of our screws there. But once we have that out of the way, come over here and remove this little Phillips style rivet. Whew. A lot easier with two hands. And once we have that out of the way, we can pull straight back on this piece. We'll pop right off there. And that exposes our existing control wire, which as you can see, runs up to the center. And it just goes down this side of the dash right here. If you need a little bit better access, you can pop this trim off right here. And there you can see where it runs through the firewall out to the front of the vehicle. I'm gonna tie a string to this, pull it through the front, make a little bit of an easier time to pull it back through here. But you guys now know how we're gonna run our wire up to the middle and mount our control box right here. All right, so we've got our four pin control wire run through the firewall, right through this hole that I showed you guys previously. Came through, I brought it up here. And we're just gonna run it up the A-pillar and across. So at this point, I'm gonna entirely reassemble the interior, um, making sure to neatly tuck this wire up out of the way of places it might get pinched. And once this is buttoned up, we can install our switch panel and hook up all the wiring to the main source box here. All right, so I've buttoned up the interior here. Looking all nice. We got our wire hanging out in the middle. And I've just figured out our situation over here. So the one thing, it was a little bit annoying to convert over from the original to the new, is that we don't have a ground inside of here, but that's not really a big deal at all. Um, and it's actually gonna help things out a lot in the future. It's more economical for Voswitch to make this without grounds for every accessory. And it's more economical for us because we don't have to run negative wires all the way from far away accessories to this box. We only have to run one wire now which is the positive wire. So in that case, I'm happy that I've converted over to this new setup. It's gonna simplify things a lot, declutter things. But for the four accessories that did have grounds already running to this location, I didn't really see the point in relocating them elsewhere. So I consolidated those four onto one crimp, onto one ring connector right here, and I plan to bolt it up using this factory bolt right into this corner of this ECU. I did some testing with a voltage tester here. I tested this fastener. It is a ground. This is also a ground. Anything that goes into the body is usually a ground. So these three, excuse me, four 10 millimeters right here, these are all grounds and you're totally welcome to use them if you want. This one's probably your best bet because it's not painted, but I didn't really want my grounds this close to the edge of the hood. So I did some further testing. This ECU is a fantastic ground as well. And this little eight millimeter bolt right here came right out. So the plan is we're just gonna bolt it back on with this ring connector and that, that'll be our ground. And then we have our four individual wires 
I have cut the original little crimps off because we need just the bare wire to slip through this waterproof connector. So I'm now about to make my first waterproof connection on the Voss switch here. So we remove that little cap and then I'm installing aw. Uh, I'm installing four accessories, so I can pull out all four of these, I believe. Just little uh, silicone plugs. Might be a good idea to hang on to those. And then I'm feeling the end here. There's actually rubberized casings inside of here. So my guess is when we tighten this down, that casing contracts and forms a watertight seal. Yeah, let's do our first thing, which is going to be switch number one to our DRLs. Gonna stick it right on through, grab it on the other side. Now I'm gonna strip this wire and crimp on one of these little included crimps. Now with this little guy crimped on here, go to switch one all the way down on this end. Just loosen that, don't have to fully remove it. Now you gotta maneuver this little crimp under that plate. Easier said than done, apparently. <laughs> There we go. Just gonna use two hands to hold this in and tighten it at the same time. And just like that, our first boss switch connection has been made. All right, I was about to move on to making our second connection here, but I had a little bit of a realization that's kind of a lifesaver. Pull this first connection out so I can show you. This whole waterproof seal assembly here can actually be removed just like so, just slides out of this assembly here. And this, just being able to have this out and free instead of in this little box, makes working on this wire, stripping it and crimping it a lot easier along with our two other wires that we still have to do. So I'm gonna do all four of those crimps beforehand and then I'm just gonna slide this entire assembly in here and then connect my four crimps. All right, here we are all hooked up. Got all four of my current accessories hooked in here and uh, it's time to throw our cover on. Love that. It's a lot easier to put on than the old cover. Almost forgot, <laughs> I gotta put the waterproof cap on over all these connectors and then screw it on this way. All right, just to clarify, this is what your completed setup should look like with the threaded part threaded in. And boy, was I right, does this thing squeeze tight around these wires. I can't even move this wire. So this is an incredibly watertight seal, at least I mean, no little splash that's coming up over the hood is making its way into this box, let's put it that way. I'm gonna neaten up these wires, then we'll jump inside and install our switch panel. All right, folks, it's finally time to install the switch panel itself. That's what this little loop is for. Kind of goes right on over like that, and then we tighten it down. But first, we need to hook up our connection and peel off the 3M adhesive backing. Now, I just had a little bit of a realization here. You'll notice I've loosened these screws significantly, almost all the way. That's because we actually need to lift this bar up like that and create a gap between the Voss switch and the bar, just like so, so that these two little wings, so to speak, are right under this gray bar. Otherwise, without the gap, there's no, there's no pressure on either side to hold it there. We'll tuck our connector in, tuck any excess right into there. As you can see, it's a nice flush fit here. Just gonna pull off our 3M backing real quick, stick it on there. I've got my two Phelps head screws. I'm gonna send them right up into this plastic trim right here. All right, I put the roof back on, close the hood and everything. This is all torqued down. It's very, very secure. Only thing left to do now is put on our little faceplate stickers. There's no daytime running light sticker. I think the driving light right here should suffice, so I'll do driving. And then the next one is the roof light bar for off-road use. The next one is the rock lights. Where's that? Rock lights right here. And then the last one is front bumper. All right, folks, we got our four first stickers installed here. Really easy, and I like that they matched the same texture on the faceplate of the Voss switch here. Very nice. So let's turn off our camera light here. Here we go. Oh yeah. So we have our daytime running light, roof light bar, rock lights, and front bumper light bar. And uh, I think it's time we test them out. So here is just our dim daytime running light. I don't know if you guys can see that on the wall, but definitely works. Here's our trail light, off-road use. Oh yeah. Here are rock lights. And here's our front bumper light bar. 
Now, I was a little bit disappointed when I turned this on because as I mentioned, I wanted to keep with the red backlight because I kind of have a red theme going on in the Jeep here. But after reading the instructions further, we can actually change the backlight. Just approach the unit while it's off, press and hold for three seconds. And now we can change the backlight color here. White. White looks pretty good. It's actually more or less actually white. Red, green, and blue. So those are our color options. I think I'm gonna stick with red for now, just personal preference there. Oh, and then if you wanna adjust brightness, I suppose white is probably a good color to show the brightness feature here. This is your down brightness, and this is your up brightness. So we're gonna lower the brightness down. That's as dim as it will go. If we wanna raise things up, that's as bright as it will go. So I'm probably gonna leave it on maximum, or maybe cl two clicks down for maximum red brightness. Press and hold for three seconds. That'll save our settings. All right, folks, we're back here. I'm not really sure where I left off. Um, it's actually like two or three weeks later now. I went back to school, started editing this Voss Switch video, and realized I had lost this footage. So we're back home, getting that footy. You guys gotta see these lights in action. To enter programming mode with the unit powered on like this in normal operating mode, We'll press down, hold down the center power button for five seconds, it'll flash briefly. We're now in programming mode, which means if we press the driving light, for example, here. The first mode is solid, just on all the time. The second mode is ignition power, so that light will turn on automatically when you turn the key to the car on. Second mode is a slow flash here. Second mode is a slow flash with a burst. Third mode is just a strobe. Then we've got strobe alternating and back to solid. So that was the daytime running light you just saw there, but I wanna show you guys just how crazy things can get here with the roof light bar, <laughs> as well as the front bumper light bar. Here's our flashing mode. Oh my God, it's so crazy. <laughs> strobe alternating strobe flash thing and solid. That kind of brings things to a close on this Voss switch setup here. To give you guys kind of a summary of my experience with it so far in the first two or three weeks, I've had a very pleasant experience. I really don't have any complaints about the actual product, how it functions, anything. The, the one and only thing that slightly annoys me because I'm OCD <laughs> is that it's not dead in the center of these two guys. Um, the old setup was just really aesthetically pleasing, not only having physical toggle switches, but it just filled up this area really nicely, but I'm okay with it. Really, other than that tiny little personal pet peeve, I, I don't have any complaints about this setup. It appears Voswitch really took some notes on the previous version. They must have listened to everyone's complaints because how that box mounts up there, it's really sturdy now, so that's an improvement. The entire source box is waterproof. We no longer have to run grounds all the way to the source box. We can just ground accessories right where they are, reducing the amount of wiring, crimps, etc., that we have to use. And finally, my fourth quick noticeable improvement is obviously the programmability of this new Voswitch setup. I think it's great that it's built in, and I honestly don't think it should even be called programmable, because when I personally think programmable, I think Oh, I'm gonna have to plug this into my computer. I'm gonna have to go through a bunch of steps to set it up. That sounds like a pain to me, programmable. Honestly, a, a more appropriate name for the setup would be a multi-function source box because that's exactly what it is. On the fly, you can hold down that button and enter programming mode, which has a bunch of different modes in it, and you can change it right then and there on the fly. So I think that's my personal biggest surprise about this new JK100 from Vosswitch. It was extremely easy to install, very easy to use and figure out. And I've already got the whole thing memorized after just two weeks. So yeah, I don't know why you would go out there and spend like $500 on one of those other source boxes. I'm not gonna name them because I haven't owned them and I can't bash on them, but I don't know why I would own them when this setup exists, especially at the low price point that they offer this app. It's just nice to know that you're supporting a company of actual enthusiasts who take your thoughts and considerations into mind and apply them to real products. Because I bet you there's gonna be a new JK200 
or whatever the next version is called in coming years here. Probably just babbling on at this point, so I'm gonna bring this video to a close. Thank you so much to Victor at Voswitch for making this video possible. Be sure to go check out the links down below and if you're a little bit overwhelmed by the price of the JK100 programmable unit and you don't think you need a programmable one, definitely go check out my previous video on the original Voswitch setup because that alone is a great setup. I, I ran that for like two seasons, two or three seasons now. You guys know I take this thing through a lot. I've taken this through a lake, mudding, bog, snow everything. I've thrown a lot at the original setup and I couldn't break it. I never got it to short out. I didn't blow a single fuse, nothing. So if that first version wasn't even waterproofed, I don't even know what this thing can take. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video covering the installation of the new Voswitch JK100 programmable switch unit. If you did, please go leave a like down below, subscribe for more Jeep content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on JD Cars. Ah! Oh, my God.